The spermatic cord is a structure that is only found in males. It is a structure that suspends the testes and epididymis from the rest of the abdominal cavity. Let's quickly review the anatomy of the spermatic cord. Here is a schematic representation of the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord originates from the deep inguinal ring. The spermatic cord will then pass through the inguinal canal and it will exit the inguinal canal at the superficial inguinal ring. Once it exits the superficial inguinal ring, it will then enter the scrotum and it will terminate at the posterior border of the testes. The contents of the spermatic cord will then exit the spermatic cord and supply structures within the testes and the scrotum. To further understand the anatomy of the spermatic cord, we need to review the layers of the anterior abdominal wall. Let's quickly go through the different layers of the anterior abdominal wall. The most superficial layer is the skin. Below the skin, there is the camper fascia, and below the camper fascia is the scarpa's fascia. Combined, the camper fascia and the scarpa's fascia are together known as the superficial fascia. Below the scarpa's fascia is the external oblique muscle. Below the external oblique muscle is the internal oblique muscle. And deep to the internal oblique muscle is the transversus abdominis muscle. There is a layer of fascia below the transversus abdominis muscle, which is known as the transversalis fascia. And below the transversalis fascia is the extraperitoneal fat. The deepest layer of the anterior abdominal wall is the parietal peritoneum, which covers the peritoneal cavity. Some of the layers of the anterior abdominal wall will transition into layers that will cover the spermatic cord. The external oblique muscle will transition into the external spermatic fascia, which is one of the fascial coverings of the spermatic cord. The internal oblique muscle will transition into the cremaster muscle and the cremaster fascia, which are both also coverings of the spermatic cord. And finally, the transversalis fascia will transition into the internal spermatic fascia, which is also one of the coverings of the spermatic cord. Let's now go over the coverings of the spermatic cord and the contents within the spermatic cord. Here is a schematic representation of the spermatic cord. A useful way of remembering the contents of the spermatic cord is to remember the rule of threes. And that is that there are three fascial coverings of the spermatic cord, three arteries, three nerves, and three other structures which we will talk about within the spermatic cord. In terms of the fascial coverings of the spermatic cord, the outside covering of the spermatic cord is the external spermatic fascia. And remember we said that the external spermatic fascia is derived from the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. The next covering of the spermatic cord is the cremaster muscle and cremaster fascia which remember is derived from the aponeurosis of the internal oblique muscle. And finally, the third covering of the spermatic cord is the internal spermatic fascia, which remember is derived from the transversalis fascia. In terms of the three arteries, one of the arteries within the spermatic cord is the testicular artery. The testicular artery is a branch of the abdominal aorta and it arises from just below the renal arteries. The second artery within the spermatic cord is the artery to the vas deferens, and this supplies blood to the vas deferens. The artery to vas deferens is a branch of the inferior vesicle artery, which itself is a branch of the internal iliac artery. And finally, the third artery within the spermatic cord is the cremasteric artery, and this artery supplies blood to the cremaster muscle and cremaster fascia. In terms of the nerves within the spermatic cord, one of the nerves is the ilioinguinal nerve. Another nerve within the spermatic cord is the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve. The ilioinguinal nerve and the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve are both very clinically important because both of these nerves are involved in the cremasteric reflex. And finally, there are also autonomic nerves within the spermatic cord, such as sympathetic fibers. And in terms of the three other structures within the spermatic cord, one of the structures is the vas deferens. The vas deferens is a structure that carries sperm from the testes to the urethra. Another structure within the spermatic cord is called the pampiniform plexus. 
The pampiniform plexus is a network of small veins that runs within the spermatic cord and provides venous drainage to the structures within the scrotum. These veins eventually drain into the testicular veins. And remember that the left testicular vein will drain into the left renal vein and the left renal vein will drain into the inferior vena cava, whereas the right testicular vein will directly drain into the inferior vena cava. And the final other structure within the spermatic cord are the lymphatic vessels, which also run within the spermatic cord and provide lymphatic drainage. So these are the main structures found within the spermatic cord. Another structure found in the spermatic cord and is not labeled on this diagram is the processus vaginalis. The processus vaginalis is a projection of peritoneum that during embryonic development will help in the descent of the testes. But normally in adults, it is fused shut. And that is the anatomy of the spermatic cord.